Hello, welcome to brand new section of this course, User Interface. Let's have an overview of this section. We will begin by installing and using Cerebro, then install Kibana and XPack. After that, manage Kibana dashboards. Next, we will be monitoring with Kibana. Next, we will look at using Kibana Dev Console, and finally visualize data with Kibana. So, let's start with the first video of this section, which is installing and using Cerebro. In this video, we are going to look at special aspects of Elasticsearch management. Cerebro is the evolution of the previous Elasticsearch plugin, Elasticsearch KOPF. You need an up and running Elasticsearch installation as we seen earlier. Also, you need Java JVM version 8.x or above must be installed to run Cerebro. Now, for installing Cerebro, you need to download it and manually install its plugin. Now once finished with the download, you can extract it. Select your C drive as seen. After extracting, in the console, type the command same as appear on the screen. On console, you would see this output. To access the web interface, you need to navigate with your browser at this address. Now let's go in detail. Cerebro is a modern reactive application written in Scala via the Play framework for the back-end REST and Elasticsearch communication in a single-page application SPA, front-end written in JavaScript with AngularJS. By default, Cerebro binds port 9000. You can navigate with a browser at this link to view the start page. In the start page, you can select a predefined host or you can manually insert the address of your Elasticsearch server. If you need, you can provide credentials for accessing your Elasticsearch cluster. After having pressed connect, if everything is okay, you can access the Cerebro main page with your nodes views as shown on this page. The Cerebro main page provides a very large overview of your cluster and data from top to bottom as shown. The menu where overview is a link to home page. Then we have rest allows to send generic rest calls and clicking on more. We have additional admin functionalities as shown here. The status line you can see here is yellow because my cluster needs more nodes. The line with cluster global stats that includes the name of the cluster, number of nodes, number of indices, number of shards, number of documents, and size of your data. The main grid block that contains node and indices information. In the first column we have as follows the general cluster control functionalities, the lock symbol allows you to lock the shard relocation at cluster level, useful for the cluster restart management. The second symbol allows you to show extra node information such as JVM version and Elasticsearch version. The sorting simply allows you to sort nodes by name. The arrow symbol allows you to execute actions to all the selected indices such as close, open, refresh, and cache clear. The unassigned shard lines allows you to check the unassigned shard for index and the node information. Where in a single cell we have node name, node IP, and heap, disk, CPU, load on the node. If these values are too high, they are showed in red. Here, it is shown in blue. In the other columns, we have indices information as follows. Index name, number of shards, number of documents, and the total size. From the arrow, you can access action that can be executed against the index. The shards are represented as a box with its number. Clicking on it, you can see additional shard information. The main page or overview view is very rich of useful data. With a single look, you can scope nodes with high loads or full disk, how the shards are distributed in your cluster, and if there are problems with some indices. Clicking on a particular index settings, a form is open to change all the index options that can be changed as appear on your screen. The Create Index page allows easy creating an index defining shards, replicas, or templates as shown here. The Cluster Settings page allows changing cluster mutable parameters from a simple interface. This is advanced usage, but the simplicity of the form speeds up cluster settings management as shown here. Managing repository can be achieved by using the repositories menu. The page allows you to define the name 
and the type of the repository to be used for future backup, restore actions, as you can see here. If a repository is created via interfaces or API, it can be used to execute backup and restore actions. Clicking on Snapshot menu, you can access a page here. On the right, you can create a snapshot selecting the repository, giving it a name, and selecting the indices that need to be backed up. On the left, there is a list of available snapshots that can be restored like this. Now the preceding part of Cerebro allows you to cover special aspects of Elasticsearch management. In the first menu, you can access a page where you can execute raw REST calls against Elasticsearch here. The Cerebro interface is quite new. The new features are in the development and will be released in the near future. 